Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at uh, what's just been released I suppose because you're going to be hopefully watching this fairly soon but anyway, we're going to be taking a look at the uh, MSI GTX 560 448 edition and the full product number is N560 GTX 448 and before we have a look at it, the actual card and compare it with like the 560 and the 570, I just want to kind of because it is quite confusing the way that they've named this um, but the uh, GTX 560 448 edition has got a GF 110 core on it uh, before now the only cards that had that were the 570 and the 580 the 560 and the 560 tie both had the GF 114 core um, so it's all got a bit confusing now to be perfectly honest with you but the normal 560, just to give you some numbers, had 336 cores. And when I say core, it's, you can also call them shader cores. So, so it, it, again, it's quite confusing. But anyway, it had 336 cores on the GF114, and that was clocked at 810 megahertz. Um, then there was uh, the GTX 560 Ti, which was... Uh, that had 384 cores and that was clocked at 822 megahertz. You then move up to what's now the GTX 560 448 with the GF 110 core, which has got 448 cores and is clocked at 732 megahertz. Then moving on again, you had the GTX 570 which had 480 cores and was also clocked at 732 megahertz. Now, just to clarify, just so there's those of you out there, the clock speeds, although it, um, it will make a difference, the lower end cards have got higher clock speed because they've got less cores. It's all to do with kind of architecture and stuff. Um, if you had, for argument's sake, a uh, 560 tie at, let's just say, 900 core, and then you had a 580 at 900 core, just because they're running at the same um, megahertz or speed, doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be running at the same you know the same kind of performance levels and it's something I've seen popping up quite a lot recently that people haven't necessarily understood that very well but anyway what we're going to do now is go and take a good look at the card break into some benchmarks uh, and just to let you know I've done the gameplay videos separate for this we've also got uh, so we've also got which will be uploaded later a dedicated Batman Arkham City gameplay video full length video as well one of my full length videos and then we've also got a full battlefield 3 gameplay video as well with all the frames per second and everything in it um, but that i've done those separately so if you're interested to see how this card performs in those games go off and watch those as well make sure you finish watching this one first though but anyway go go and uh i should sorry go and we'll go and take a look at the um yeah, the 560 tie, nice up close. So yeah, let's get on with that. Well then guys, first look at the MSI and I'll read the full part number out because it's apparently the N560 GTX-448 and it's a Twin Frozer 3 Power Edition. Um, obviously it's the uh, uh, stock... Um, GTX 560-448 underneath, so it's got 1280 megabyte of RAM. Um, it's just got, basically it's got uh, the MSI Military Class Components 2. Um, uh, obviously DX11, it works with uh, Afterburner, but then pretty much everything does. Um, yeah, and I suppose really the thing with this is the fact that it does come with the Twin Frozer 3 cooler. And uh, I'll just show you the other side of the box. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the camera off, take the accessories out, and then I'll show you those in a sec. Right, I'm just going to do this quickly. Uh, basically, there's two uh, six-pin adapters to two Molexes. Not being funny, if you have to use these in your rig, then your power supply is probably not going to be good enough to power it anyway. So I would never, ever use these. So we'll bin those straight off. There's then a um, mini HDMI to full-size HDMI adapter. There's DVI to VGA. Um, there's a quick afterburner manual. And then there's the driver disc. So all nice and simple and nicely done and 
finish quickly. Right, now it's time to get to the bit that you've all wanted to see anyway, and that's to actually finally get a look at the card. Now it's got the Twin Frozer 3 cooler on it, so this looks like, um, like a miniature version of a lot of the Lightning cards. You've obviously got this metal shroud over the top of the heatsink. Uh, the heat pipes are unlike a lot of designs that would have the heat pipes all hanging out the top. This has actually got them quite tidily hidden so that they actually go right down near your motherboard so you don't see them, which keeps the top of the card looking a lot cooler. Again, we can see that we've got um, two six pins. Uh, it's also worth noting that uh, with this 560, the 448, you can triple SLI them because they've got two slots. The original 560 or the 560 and the 560 tie, because it does get very confusing with these model names, um, they couldn't be, they, they were only, you know, dual SLI. This card, uh, you have the ability of doing a uh, triple. So that's all quite nice. Now, looking onto the back quickly, you can see the MSI branded back plate, although not really a lot of heat's gonna be coming out there because it's generally designed to be vented in the case. We've got a pair of DVIs and then a mini HDMI port. So, let's have a close look at this cooler. You can see that the fades are the fades, the fan blades have actually got these little kind of smoother areas and you can see it there as it starts to slow down but slightly different pitch on the end of the blades compared to the insides. It is quite an understated design in the fact that it's quite subtle because of that grey Something to point out as well, um, which is quite nice, has got a black PCB, although with all the copper in it, it does have a hint of brown to it, which when you look at that sticker, you can see the difference, or at least I can to my eyes. Look at the HDMI sticker, let me turn it around this way, see if you can pick it up, but the HDMI sticker is black, and you can see a kind of a colour difference. Now to my eyes, it's definitely a black PCB, but like I said, because of the copper, it just looks a bit brown. But anyway. So there we have it. A really good looking 560. I suppose really I should say its full name and say the GTX 560 448. But anyway, the MSI version, I really, really like the look of this. Right then, peeps, on to the 3D Mark P scores. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can see Vantage. Uh, and just to let you know, we're on an updated version of Vantage now. So it's uh, it puts all of the physics onto the CPU, which is why the CPU scores are slightly lower. And that obviously also affects the uh, the overall score. But anyway, we had 22,225. Lots of twos in that. Um, but yeah, for 3D Mark Vantage, and then uh, for 3D Mark 11, we had a P score of 5,723. So both pretty enormous scores there. What we're going to do now, though, is uh, go off and do uh, X scores or extreme scores for both of the benchmarks. Right then, peeps, on to the X scores. Uh, for Vantage, we've got 11,166, and then 3D Mark 11, we've got 1,790. Right then, peeps, on to Unigen. Uh, frames per second were 55.9, we got a total score of 1,408, and that was with a minimum frames per second of 24.4, and a maximum frames per second of 24.2. You can, this has literally just been opened and run as I always do, never bugger about with it, you can see all the settings there underneath, it's just at stock. Anyway, uh, it must be time for some gameplay now.
Right then, peeps, as this is my uh, second of the 448 reviews that I've done, I can now compare this to uh, the car that I did previously, which is the Gigabyte. But I'm going to give you the score, um, uh, the award, sorry, and then I will talk through it as we always do. And we're going to give it the Silver Award, the same as the Gigabyte. Um, now, I want to go over all the things that I did with the Gigabyte review as well, and then we'll go into this. But I do feel that they should have called this the 565, because I think that the naming... The fact that we've got the 560, 560 tie, now the 560 tie fought with 48, it's just a little bit too confusing. Um, and another reason why I think they should have called it the uh, 565 is it sits so much, so perfectly between the 560 tie and the 570. It's unbelievable. Um, the only thing that has come to light, because I'm recording this video uh, relatively late, the NDA has actually passed now and all the prices have gone live, whereas when I recorded the Gigabyte I couldn't do that. Um, now the price of this car is going to be £251.99 uh, and that's quite, it's quite a difficult one because you can get 570s for that money. Um, so it kind of leaves a bit, it's a very, very good card. Obviously fits in very well between the two cars and stuff, but the price is so close to 570s. It's made me think, maybe you'd be better off going and buying a 570. Um, obviously you've got the more cores. Uh, it's just, it's a very, very confusing one now. We honestly thought, pretty much everyone on the team, thought we were going to be looking at around £210 for the 560, 448s. 520 at a push, maybe pushing into 530 for like overclocked ones with loads of stuff in the bundles and stuff. But £550 just seems a little bit too much to be perfectly honest with you, which is why, because we were going to bump the MSI maybe a little further up, maybe gold or maybe even a performance award because we did find it very, very good. But that price really stings and that's something that I think all of the brands are going to have looking at the prices. That's, the price makes it very, very confusing. But let's compare the MSI and the Gigabyte. The MSI cooler, even overclocked, was 7 degrees cooler than the Gigabyte cooler. Um, at stock, we were looking at uh, 10 degrees cooler, which that's a massive amount. And the reason why I'm so shocked about that is the Gigabyte's actually got a vapour chamber on it and the MSI hasn't. The MSI is just a normal kind of heat pipe cooler. Um, and I was very, very surprised. I was expecting it to be the other way around. So it just goes to show you how good the cooler is on this. I mean, I know the twin frozers are good, but I was just thought, you know, vapour chamber is going to be amazing. It's not, not going to be able to touch it. And it was, it was completely the opposite way around. I'd even go as far as to say is that the, the MSI is quieter. And it does seem to me, because I wasn't a fan of the twin throws on the higher card, I think the 570 is about as high as you can really go with it. 580, like the Lightning, the, the actual cooler on it, although it did the job, it was just too noisy. It just couldn't hack the amount of heat that it was trying to put through it. But this, it's really quiet, performs really well. The temperatures are absolutely brilliant. Massively, massively. Do you know what I mean? The Twin Frozer 3 really, it was almost like it was designed for this card. It's absolutely brilliant. So if I was going to be telling you which one of the two cards so far that I've reviewed out of the MSI and the Gigabyte, the MSI is only marginally more expensive, like a few quid. And the, co the, the extras that you get with it because of the cooler, it is worth it for that. It's got the black PCB. The cooler's a little bit shorter, it's quieter, and it's cooler. So I, I, I would go with the MSI. But on the flip side of that, if you said to me right now, TTL, I've got £250 to spend on an NVIDIA graphics card, I would be telling you to not go on a night out or something, find the extra bit of money and buy yourself a 570 from MSI or Gigabyte or Asus or anyone instead. Because um, they're, they're so closely priced, I th personally think you'd be much better off going up to the next one. Um, I now kind of understand why Nvidia have said that this is going to be a limited edition and they're not going to make very many of them because I don't really know, you know whether they will sell very many of them because if you want a budget card, get the 560. If you want to move up into a kind of mid-range, borderline, high-end card, then I would honestly say get yourself a 570. Uh, and I think those two kind of areas are very well, you know, the prices are really, really good. Sticking this in the middle, I really don't see the point because 
at the end of the day it is just a chop down 570 although it's speed been in and i understand all the kind of jibber jabber about the fact that you know i mean they they're, they're using these up you know to keep costs down with the others because it's all you know what i mean the the easiest way to explain it is that the graphics cores on them they probably haven't cut the the mustard for the 570s and nvidia have been sticking them off to one side uh, they've got enough of them together to be able to do a range of them and then they've stuck them out you know with the faulty uh, cores or whatever turned off down clocked a bit however they've gone about it to make the 560 448 now that's not a bad thing you should never think that's a bad thing because a you get choice b that means it keeps the prices down because by using them up and selling them to people even with them uh slightly turned off keeps prices down for everyone because there's less waste um so it's not a bad thing. Get that negative kind of half empty thoughts out of your head. It's half full. It's the pricing really. I think they should have been priced a little bit less. And that's not necessarily an MSI or, you know, the vendor problems. I think Nvidia should have been aiming them slightly less from the get go. But it's not to say that it's not a good card because they are brilliant. Uh, and even with, as you'll see with Battlefield and um, Batman, completely maxed out, this little card does comfortably play them. Uh, and that 's on a nineteen uh, twenty by ten eighty screen as well, and like I said, with everything turned right up and although some of the frames a second do dip below thirty, it is still playable so a bit of a uh, confusing one it 's definitely one to uh, be thinking about rather than just plowing in and getting something um, so please watch the other videos, please watch the gameplay, see what you think obviously as ever i 've not said this for a while, but subscribe, comment, favorite, like all that kind of stuff. Much love if you do, but for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you, out.